Welcome everyone, this is Carolina Global Revival and I'm Robin Mowbray, your host. We've got a wonderful program for you today. We have Pastor Lynn Robinson and Cameron Garner in the house and we're really thrilled that they're here. We're gonna be talking about lots of good things that are happening with Rock Haven Church in Rocky Mount. But first, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Can you lead us in prayer, sure. Pastor Lynn? Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity to to hopefully bring clarity to, to what you're wanting to do in our nation, what you want to do in our city, and what you want to do in us each and everyone individually, God. And we just ask for you to help us, Lord, to, to have the strategies of the kingdom because we're not here just to talk. We're here to, to help get people together for the purpose of your kingdom, Lord. And we just ask for you to help us to let that purpose come to fruition so that we could all come together for the cause of Christ, and we thank you today for that, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, before we discuss the subject, we like to go to the Word of God, see what the Word of God has to say about it. And the word that came to me is a kind of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're wanting in our area and for our whole nation. Isaiah 44, 3 says, For I will pour out water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. Joel 2, 28 and 29 says, it will come about after this. I will pour my spirit, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And that spiritual sons and daughters too. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And this is those days. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For, why, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slaves or free. And we are all made to drink of one spirit. Hmm. God is so good. His word is so powerful. And I am just pleased that we have Pastor Lynn Robinson in the house today and um, with his friend Cameron Gardner. And um, you were born, Pastor Lynn, uh, we are Rocky Mount boy. You were born and raised in Rocky Mount. This man been here all my life. All your life. There you go. I like that. And you were mar you're married 31 years to Wendy. Yes. And um, you worked in professional sales in Wilson for a time, but then, um, what we're, we're not going to talk about that. What we're going to talk about is Rock Haven Church. So, in your in laws' um, house, you had six people in 2008. The Lord called you to be a pastor. So, you said, Okay, I'm going to obey. And you did. And now you have Rock Haven Church, which you're bursting at the seams, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's in Rock Haven. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, well that's so exciting. Um, okay, and your your friend here is Cameron. Ministry well, partner. Ministry partner. Yes, Cameron, how do you spell your last name? G-A-R-N-E-R. -E Cameron Gardner. I just want to get that right. So you were um, you were born in Johnson County, but you're a North Carolina boy. You were born in Johnson County. That's right. And to Angelina, you have you have three kids. You've been married. Y'all both been married a long time. And um, your owner and operator of a professional cleaning, healthy home cleaning services, is That's that correct. right? Yes, ma'am. And um, what commercial and residential cleaning, but but you have all your time uh, that you need to worship God and spend time in the ministry. And Absolutely. in fact, I want to talk about Asbury in a minute, but you can't. Um, you did go to Asbury when that happened in February, but we're going to go back to that. First of all, I want to know, Pastor Lynn, how did you come to faith in Christ? I was raised in church. My mom, I used to tell people my mom had a drug problem. She drug me to church. She, drug, she never really actually had a drug problem, but she drug me to church. She drug me Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And so, so I was drugged to church when I was a little kid. And when I got old enough to rebel and say, I'm not going to church anymore, my daddy was not a believer and he said he's not going. And so I, he wrote me a check to go wild and I went wild for several, several years and I went way out way out in the world deep and fast and uh god started getting a hold of my life and i at uh 16 years old i started 
getting so involved in substance and, and alcohol and drugs and stuff, I started going into a really, really deep depression. And, and I, I confided in my mom, and my mom was only answer for everything is Jesus. <laughs> and so, wise. And so I ended up realizing that that was the way, and I, I, I found something that was worth holding on to. I found something that grabbed me and, and just changed my life, and, and my life took a direction then, and, and I'd have had any idea it was going to ever end up in ministry, but it, the Lord worked it out mm -hmm. over and over, and I ended up being in ministry. Was that in your 20s that you got came back to the Lord? No, I actually came back to the Lord around, this is just speaks to how far out our young children can go if you don't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I came back to the Lord at 17. And oh, I, that's good. I can't, and yeah, but I came back to the Lord at 17. But I started, I started doing drugs and drinking at a very early age, and probably I, I hung around a lot older people. So be careful, people. Your kids are are subject to a lot right, more things but, than you think. But but you came back at right. 17. Did, is that when you met your wife? No, ma'am. I met her. I met her when I was 18. I met her when I was 18. Okay. All right. Well, so you were, um, and, and you've been going strong with the Lord ever since. How about you, Cameron? How did you come to faith in Christ? Um, I got saved at a young age. Um, got saved about 10 times. And <laughs> you weren't sure you were saved. That's and you right. went to the altar again and again. They didn't really clarify what salvation was at that time. That's correct. The fear um, of God. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, I... Yeah, I got saved at a young age, knew the Lord, uh, was introduced to God. Uh, my, my family was uh, loved Jesus when I, when I was growing up. You said one was Baptist, one was Pentecostal. So you Yeah, I did grow up in a split home, so uh, one Sunday was Pentecostal, the next Sunday was Baptist. That's okay, you got, you got the word, you that's got the right, truth. That's right, and um, I, I think that was really actually a blessing. It opened my eyes up to a lot of things. Um, helped me to not just have one specific stance on how I view scripture but yeah. to uh, be open-minded and, mm -hmm. and allow God to teach me um, and then you know I had some church hurt when I was 13 very similar to him yeah. as far as uh, so you just, fell away yeah ran ran as fast as I could in the wrong direction um, and then um, when I was about 20 years old um, I was at work and there was a man that was on fire for God evangelizing everywhere he went and uh, you got mm. mm -hmm. and and I just missed that relationship and that connection with God and, and uh, so you that's, came back that's right well you both love ministering together and you um, Rock Haven Church began in 2008 yes, and so how many years is that to 20 15 15 years 15. Yeah. <laughs> okay so um, that's very exciting and your church like you said has been on fire for the Lord before Asbury ever hit, but you went to Asbury. Tell me what you, just briefly, when you felt that bubble the second day, you and your wife and your two girls, two of your girls, y'all went. It was my, um, so my wife and I and, and my son Nicholas and my daughter Charlotte, we okay. um, We went out to uh, Kentucky, we went to the Asbury Revival. Uh, we were trying to figure out where to park and where the, the building was on campus. And, um, and then as we were seeing the, all the people crowd around this building, we started walking that direction. And we were probably three football fields away. And, um, and it was, we just walked into this bubble of the presence of God. I started crying. My wife started crying. One of, my, one of our children started crying. And, and, uh, and um, uh, it was just really powerful. And it was just a unique facet of the, the presence of God. I had wow. experienced the presence of God. And, in that way before that time. Like you said, it was kind of like the glory, but it was love. You felt this love, uh, tangible, tangible yeah. love of God. It was this accepting, loving, it, and, but it wasn't like this overwhelming, like you can't stand or uh, in his presence type. Um, it was more like this, it was extremely obvious, but it was very gentle at the same time. It's oh, really hard to explain. So yeah. But but you know that that is so dear. That is so dear. Well, y'all love the Lord with a fiery love of God, which is good. God calls us to be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. You're definitely hot. And so, how has your Rock Haven Church responded to this? And 
I mean, not, I mean, you go over there all the time. Tell us, you, we have, PJ, would you roll us some, um, your pictures, the pictures and the videos of Rock Haven. Okay, tell us what's this going on. This is our first, God gave me this idea. We we love outside evangelism. When, uh, when 2020 hit and, and COVID hit and it run everybody out of the churches, I said, this can't be the will of God. This can't be right. So we we bought a stage, we bought a track a trailer, track and trailer trailer, turned it into a stage on South Halifax Road. Some of you have probably seen that over there by West Mount, but uh we did that and our church really started really growing through that because people were able to come when churches were shut down and it just created a love in us. And I knew when we started the church that we were gonna have an outdoor event center. God told me that from the beginning and we have the back of our property is called Heartland. Is where we're going to have outdoor crusades and and uh, events and so forth. And we're preparing that. But we and then God gave me this roll up revival idea because we love it. We our whole church is workers. That's one of the things we got is people that aren't afraid to go out and 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 be inconvenienced with their time and put their time and effort and hard work and sweat into going after the Lord and going after people and yeah. and so we we did that and man it just it, it blew up and then god gave us this roller revival and this is the second one we're actually adding banners and adding to it every time this is the second one but it's getting yeah. bigger you and were, it's great you were at tractor supply which i couldn't go to that one but this was at hobby lobby right. parking lot that was powerful i mean the singing was beautiful the the word the message was awesome um just so good just so good. There you are in the your black shirt and your khaki pants right there. There, there you are. And so if and you're all here these, tonight, okay, this evening, hear. and you just need Jesus to touch your life, if you will just come to this tent right here, we want to pray for you. Amen. You see, we don't just that is talk our, about this. We believe it with everything in our, our heart. Our prayer pastor, Melissa Griggs. We're not here. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't uh, be here. She's also missionary Amen. work. They're going to God is Columbia the move. first year. And we, group we serve a miracle work in God. Yeah. And I don't care what your need is. I don't care what your need is. You can go right over there where they are and we'll pray for you. And you will see the power of God fall in your situation. Amen. Awesome. Amen. And there's one more video, I think. So if you're here tonight or this evening and you just need Jesus to touch your life, if you will just come to this tent right here, we want to pray for you. Amen. You see, we don't just talk about this. We believe it with everything in our hearts. Amen. We're not here. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be here. Amen. And God is wanting to move. And we, we serve a miracle work in God. Yeah. And I don't care what your need is. I don't care what your need is. You can go right over there where they are and we'll pray for you. And you will see the power of God fall in your situation. Amen. Wow. Mm. God is good. God is so good. You know. So, so good. goodness is running after us well you know that just explains it so you want to do more of those you want to do we more. love outdoor vengeance and what we really want to do is because god has given us an, a mandate and god has it was prophesied over me years ago that god had given me the keys to the city and i didn't know what that meant for a long That's time good. i didn't understand what that meant and i know that god's dedicated to bringing revival back to this city. This is yeah. our city, and we're gonna, the violent, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. It's up to us to get attitudes towards what what is the disobedience of our city, the disobedience that is happening in our nation, and just go after mm -hmm. 
the, the world with the Amen. love of God. And we're not afraid to go after the, the, the world. We're not afraid. We don't care who you are. We don't care what nationality, what background you come from. We're, we're laid back, loving Jesus people. And, 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 and I'll tell you this, everyone that comes in our church says, I've never experienced the love of God like I have when I, when, oh, wow. and the love of people like that in that so church. Good. And so that's, that's so if good. there's a testament to, to our ministry, that's it, that we, that we try our best to go after the whole foundation of what our church was based on. And what God told me is not about denominations, and tearing, but it's about tearing down denomination walls. Denomination comes from the words divided nation. So uh, about tearing down denominational walls and we're just going after people. And, and so the Lord said, you base it on the commandment, the new commandment that I give you in John that says that you look, they'll know that you're my disciples because you have love one to another. Yeah. And that's what our church is based on, that you'll know that my, they're our disciples, not because of the name on the church or anything like that, because we have love one to another and we're dedicated to get that love spread through this city and once that love encounters the people those people will change yeah absolutely. you're keeping the main thing the main thing absolutely you're absolutely not, as we were talking before you're not going to scream what heaven is whispering you're going or or um, right right uh, i believe that the church too often is screaming what heaven is whispering and whispering what heaven is screaming. And the church, I believe, too often is not getting the main thing, the main thing, and we're, we're getting the cart before the horse, and, yeah. and, and too many times we're, we're not fulfilling, we're neglecting the, the meaty matters and going after the nominal things. And yes. so, so that's what we're doing. We believe just going after what God says to go after. Yeah, and y'all have salvations all the time. All I mean, the time you minister all the time. You say every Sunday somebody gets saved, but there are other times in between. Like you said, you go to Walmart, you go, it's not just on the flatbed trucks and the parking lots. It's also, you, you lead a team um, to Walmart, and where were these other places? There are malls? So about three or four weeks ago, uh, we do a lot of you know individual outreach because uh, ministry is supposed to be a lifestyle. Um, and we should be seeing the things of God happen through our life everywhere we go. That's what I'm really passionate about is teaching and training people, equipping people to know who they are in Christ and to walk it out and live it as an everyday lifestyle. So everywhere you go, people are being encountered by God. And so we took a team out uh, a couple weeks ago. I think it was uh, 27 people that showed up for about, uh, I think it was about 10, uh, 9 or 10 hours that we were just out ministering. We'd go out to eat, minister to the waiters waitresses yeah. people in, you know and it's just you know it's just everywhere we go it's a lifestyle so we take people out equip them teach them because um, once you start seeing God move through you it's exciting it, 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 you're changed you're blown Absolutely. away mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, because that that should be normal Christianity that is normal Absolutely. but what what we're experiencing in many of our churches even in Rocky Mount but across the nation it's subnormal Christian I mean, we're eating the crumbs when God says come to the banqueting table right absolutely right and I believe mainly a lot of that it's like like you said the churches are majoring on the minors and minoring on the majors and, and you don't but, but Jesus majored in love he didn't say That's right. you will know us by our doctrine <laughs> That's no, right. No, not by the I sign mean, on the church. It's important. Right. It's important to have that right. But you know, he says uh, you'll know we are Christians by our love. I mean, that's. I mean. Absolutely, and we have. We don't care. We don't care who you are when you come in. We don't care what kind of. But when you come in and you experience the love of God, and and it changes you, and that's what we're all about. Come yeah. in, feel the love of God, find it, and God will change your life. Because right. people are looking for love, but they're looking in all the wrong places. And some people don't know the church has the love answer because that what they see is a lot of religiosity. They see a lot of rules and do's and don'ts, and they don't see, and that's what you're talking about, the, all the minutia, minoring in the, um, majoring in the minors. Right. But, but, but it's the love. You, you know, God establishes boundaries for all of us because he loves us. Right. And so he wants to protect us when we, you know, so that's why he has some don'ts, you know. And our desire is to see churches come together. I don't think 
the churches are so polarized and, and so afraid to to come together as a as a unit as a the, it's not about our church it's about his kingdom that's right and if the that's it people it's can his come. kingdom and, and and sometimes the pastors are saying it's my kingdom you know it's my kingdom. my castle my build my castle kingdom, kingdom. Right. my ca castle kingdom. kingdom but it's his kingdom right and true christianity is advancing his kingdom not our little piece of the property right you know but um yeah, I mean, I thought, what would it take for all of Rocky Mount to see Jesus? Sure. Would that be all the churches to walk together in Absolutely. love? Would How long would that take uh, for all of Rocky Mount to be saved, or at least those who would willing, you know, if they saw the churches, not just the Baptists with the Baptists, not just the Pentecostals with the Pe Pentecostals, not just, you know. And I know, I, I've been thinking about that. Why can't we just love each other and just all get along yeah I believe that we're gonna have to see people come together outside see it's hard to get the leaders of churches to come together it's just difficult to get leaders of churches to come together because everybody's intimidated about somebody leaving their church and whatnot but we're not about trying to build our church we're about building the kingdom and it's not about go back to your church but take revival we're trying to come together and let people experience the power of god and then take it back to their churches and and absolutely that's what we're about we, we it's just about reaching the world and the churches may not want to get involved but there are hungry hearts and there are people that are watching and people that are are engaging and want to see the power of god fall in our city and your church may not want to but you want to and so we're we're not we're coming to the body we're we're appealing to the body to the kingdom that said hey even if your church and it's not like i said we're not trying to get build the church or building the kingdom but even if your church isn't involved but you want to see revival you want to see something more happening that come come help us reach our city come help us evangelize our city come help us reach the ones that are that are hurting that are lost yeah. the only way we're going to get revival back and make this truly the city on the rise again is get the churches to rise up and somebody to stop being lazy and, and not doing anything for the kingdom because we got a lot of churches out there that have uh, tons of resources but they're not doing anything with them and what good is it doing so we we have limited resources but we're trying to maximize all of it and the lord is the lord is blessing and, I'm, and we're going to see that yes we're tapped out in our church but god is going to work that out and make that happen yeah you're, you're bursting at the seams but you will um the lord will supply he all will. your needs according to his riches and glory so That's yeah right. so even if you need a big building you said a bigger building because when you they come in there's no place to almost sit. and we don't even right right now in our church we don't even have it's a, it's a bad we don't even have the ability to evangelize or invite people because our church is at capacity yeah, and so we're needing need to build so bad yeah but you know that's a good thing and a lot of pastors would love to have that problem you know most pastors have a problem with too many empty seats but um when you have the presence of god flowing in a church People can't get enough of that, and they want more. There's so they, much unity. There's so much unity, mm -hmm. and there's so much, you know, just experiencing the presence of, of the Lord in the church is, is a beautiful thing. It's a joyful thing, and you do have some great singing, too. I thought you had some really good vocalists there. Absolutely. And, you know, believers, there's a lot of faith in your church. You know, it's impossible to please the Lord without faith. You know, you have a lot of faith going on there too. Right. Faith and love and hope, you've got it's, it all. It's beautiful because the it's not only leadership. You know, the, the members a, of the yeah. church are, are growing and they're, they're being activated in their in, in the gifts of God and in faith and they're taking right. it to the, it's, to the it, streets. That's right, well, like when I called you the other night, you said, well, I'm in church, but we're having testimony night. Testimony night. Five minutes of fire. Five minutes of fire. So everybody gets, you know, we need more testimonies. That brings on the faith when you have your testimony. And, you know, I, I, I'm excited. I, I'm going to have to come visit your church and just see what it's all about. Um, you know, this is a great, great, awesome, awesome thing here. And we have almost run out of time. So um, it goes by so fast. It does go by fast when you're talking about the goodness of God and um, 
on fire churches and we do have a couple of on fire churches in Rocky Mill. We want key, more, but the key is salvation. We would none of us would be sitting here if right? it weren't for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know. That's right. And I appeal to everyone that wants to see your city be saved. Come get involved, and again, look us up and come to our. our What's your address? What's your address? Thirty-four thirty-eight South Halifax Road, Rocky Mount, is where we're located at Rock Haven Church. Look us up on Facebook. Follow us so you can find out when the next Roll Up Revival is. And come be a part of us. Come be a part of, of what God is doing. We are determined to bring revival and to fa help facilitate revival over this city and to start it in people individually. And it's going to radiate into the homes, to the personal lives, to the marriages. And we're going to see God yeah. help bring that. Yeah. And That's on, on Tuesday nights, we purposely, he purposely um, made his. Week, uh, weekday services on Tuesday yeah. so that people can visit uh, our church can on come. Tuesday and our, our people at our church can go to other churches on okay, Wednesday. Okay, that so. is so wonderful. That yeah. is so wonderful. I tell you what, we have run out of time. There might be somebody watching, Pastor Lynn, who does not know the Lord. Could you lead us all in a simple prayer of salvation? Absolutely. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if he's never been in your life and ask him to come in your life and, and fill you with his spirit if you've never repented of your sins this is the best life hack that you could ever do we can search for love in all the wrong places if you're looking for fulfillment and you don't know him as your savior you need to fix that that is the biggest life hack that you will ever find is for you to ask god to come into your life and forgive you of your sins salvation is not a repeat after me it is a searching your heart and, and asking God to fill you with his spirit, repenting of your sins and a personal, starting a personal relationship. Father, I ask for you right now, if anyone does not know you, if anyone's looking for a relationship, they're looking for something more, God, they've looked in everything, uh, everything life has to offer. We've looked under everything, God, but we ask for you to introduce yourself to them as they come to you and say, Lord, come into my life, save me. I want you to be my Lord. Father, forgive me of my sins. Search my heart, and I want you to be my Lord. God, I ask for you to do that in Jesus' name. Lead them to the place and fill them completely with your spirit so that their life will be changed forever, so that we'll find the fulfillment that life has to offer. They will find the life abundantly that you promised us in John 10.10. 10. And God, I thank you for that opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God is so good. He is Amen. so good. Thank you, Pastor Lynn, for being my guest today. And Cameron Garner, thank you for yes, being thank you. my guest. And I want to thank the E.C. Powell family for being my sponsor today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Carolina Global Revival. Remember, revival begins in one heart at a time. May revival begin in your heart today. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. God bless.